Hi guys, welcome to this quick video on how to loot the Haddonfield 2.0 map, which released uh, today on the 27th of the uh, of April 2022. So just a quick intro, I hope you enjoy, um, let's not waste any more time, and I'll show you how to loot each and every household. So our first house is this pretty blue house. Now the first obvious window is this one where you bolt it and go all the way around again, kind of like classic Adam Field and each shoes with that. Now if we head upstairs to this window, take note of the distance that I fall uh, from dropping versus the killer. So I drop behind the fence here and they drop just underneath the fence. Now, this was clearly introduced to a previous Haddonfield loops where you could just drop and infinitely run around. So now if you hold W, you'll go behind the fence, making it harder for you to run back to the window. However, to counteract this, let go of W after you vault and you will drop just below the window. We'll see this a couple of times in this video. As a further note, you can also get hit over these fences, so don't hug them against the killer. So here we're going back up to vault the window, but instead not holding W as we drop, you'll see the difference. This allows anyone who wants to rotate around the same window with balance and do it again and much quicker. So tip, don't hold W. Now if the killer ever gets too close to you like that, there's that window to take in this specific window. Now the next window I'm sure you all noticed is this window here. So we're setting up a loop here just against a normal distance where the kill's quite here. So here we go. You can vault it, I believe, three times with the optimal light distance. And the killer generally can't really mind game it as long as you're patient enough. So if that's already here, you can actually see I think I got around it three times. Another tip is to not take this window if you're approaching the house from the front because it's that upset. If you've got the killer at the back, say near that pallet and then just broke it. You know, you're in a good position. It's time to start taking this window. Now, looking at the killer's distance from me, I can tell I won't make it around again. So instead, I play like this. Some killers might get used to that or not, but for now, I think you can get away with being sneaky about that. Now, note my pathing here, where I'm forcing the killer to work that way. I will not force them to cut me off, but allowing myself to get a fast. So now instead you're approaching the house from the front side, so we see yet another window that can be vaulted and run around. And with dead art, this will be even more busted, you know, eat the distance. And even if you don't make it around again, this is the time when you start playing these pallets. The pallets are almost like bloodless breakers. So we're now at the new House of Pain, which I think will be just as painful at least. It's only temporary though. Now, we're starting here because I want to show you a trick which is much like the uh, Strange Things map, pre-dropping a pallet. That's an unsafe pallet, guys. And just, you know, try playing it. It's just unfair. This is how you're meant to play this pallet. Now, everyone used to complain about the Stranger Things pallets because they're all unsafe and whatnot, but the point of the pallets were to make your own loops, and then you can make some absolutely busted pallets. So you can see here, this legion's barely making any distance. In fact, he got lost down there because he assumed I was going to play that power instead. Remember, you don't have to just spin around a safe power. You don't have to just go down there and go, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a power I'm going to drop. Instead, you use your imagination. So we're going to go normally here again. This is just standard. I told them, just hold W, chase me like a normal person. I just want to reiterate. This is not a pallet you're meant to be playing with because it's close. I don't want to see any of the farms going on what's with these useless pallets. No point is you chain it with other ones, which is that safe pallet down there. Now you, you just run, you go up here, run to the feet, up and over. And you can actually force a killer to break that pallet, which to many people just seems unsafe. But if any top tier survivors remember old Stranger Things map, you know, some of these pallets will get a bit ridiculous. And just a quick comment, I will not be covering the downstairs pallet because, you know, it's a, you run circles around it, safe pallet. Okay, our next uh, house is the leftmost house of uh, the uh, street. So you can see this window here is just completely abusable. Um, they uh, they uh, rotate the opposite way. You go up this window. For killers, the best way they can outplay is actually bolt like that there. It was unpredictable, but with patience you'll be able to outplay it. 
Obviously, at this point, this is where you meant to use the palace, like in the other house. Don't just run to the palace and run around them and go, I'm a really good loot, and look at me running the pallet. Those pallets are there to assist, not to be the main focus. So, here we go again. Just be patient. Double back. So, which window do we go? Obviously, this window. He would have got the hit there, but I was just telling him just what I was doing. You can see, we can just keep going around this. Just keep going around. I remember when you drop, try let go of W as well. You can see at the moment there, actually, it's like, oh, let go of W. Let's see. And there you are. You lose less distance. So the killers can cut you off here and yada yada. Now that we've blocked this window, we rotate to this window. Now, I've told them not to break the door here, just so we can use it later. But, you can see, this window here is just to help in that last push, just the final moment, so it's like, I'm about to get caught. Go to this. He'll break the window, but Lust is gone. Okay, now, here's an example of my unique pathing at a different car. So, obviously, there's a lot of these windows. Oh, I'm going to go to this window. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to this window. Back to the car. See, the house, this house just doesn't seem very, you know, brain work going on. It's just kind of like, you know, you do your thing. So, you can see here, once again, you're in a bad position. Now you've got this window. Now you've got this breakable power, stuff like that. Don't make the mistake of survivors that think they're great and will run to a safe power, spin around it for a bit, waste all the resources, and then you'll end up in situations where many times bloodlust is going to get you. And that's my main issue with this map. Now can we just acknowledge this uh, back corner of the map where uh, this legionnaire is uh, laughing at it. It's one extremely unsafe power. I would recommend instead of playing the, the adventures there, place, play the benches at that lamp post there instead. That's the only tip, but generally, do not run here. This is a last resort location, or like a splitting up distance location. I don't know how consistent the spawns will be like this, but uh, it's brutal. Now the uh, big house. So there is a couple of changes that I've noticed in this house. Well, I think only one, but um, generally there isn't much different from the uh, PTP to line. So now we're just going to simulate being on a gen in this house, reacting to the tower radius. And let's see how the pathing and what I do goes. Don't mind me running into a wall there. Obvious pathing here. Now, actually, this fence here was something they know from the uh, BTB. I'm early certain. The fence is now short. I've mean, still wear a corner. So if you notice these bushes again, this is to like allow killers to be able to play at the least. So you can wear the corner and just watch to see where they are. The bushes kind of break that line of sight. But look at this. We go in circles. And the killer just has to hold W. Or, I mean, he can moonwalk down the bush there, I suppose. But, um, yeah, this is how you run your circle around this house. Now here we are where we're going to say the killer is, you know, counter-rotating or you're going to rotate around the house the other way from the uh, optimal way that I showed a second ago. Now you're thinking here, what do I do? Where do I go? There's nothing really left on the map. So this fence is here while they're vaulting around the window. It could confuse them as he did my friend here and made him go the wrong way. And then right back around the house we go. Okay, now we showcase this pathing again and taking advantage of it. Move out the window. We go behind the fence. I got stuck in a step there. And now we can play this window. At this point, you have a choice between going around the back of the house or using the pallet to the to just next to that in the other house or rotating to this pallet.
Now, the final building is arguably the worst building on the map. Uh, the whole point of it, however, is to camp the corners and watch the pathing of the killer. Basically, maximize the distance. You know, it says less bushes on this fence, which means actually promoted. There is a pallet behind you there, but you can also rotate it all the way around the back. And that pallet back there, you can be zoned. So you've got this pallet, and then you play this pallet, that's pretty much all you do with this house. You camp the corners of the house to get max distance and waste time. This pallet is pretty much the same, a time waster. Now, as a discussion for these pallets here in the middle, please do not be one of those survivors that think they're good because they run to this car, run around with it, you can see the killer is easy. The job of these pallets is a bloodlust breaker. This whole map is with bloodlust, because that's your main problem. So use these pallets to break bloodlust. Do not go in chairs and immediately run to these pallets, because that's how you make your team lose. The houses are there for a reason. So now it's time to show a final chase against my uh, brother as killer. So throughout this chase there'll be a couple of little tricks I do, little neat things that you can see which I'll call out if I know it's them. So uh, enjoy this uh, final chase to showcase the haven field and how it generally should be run. Now as I know I won't make it back to that window in time, I want to instead make some unique pathing to make you know, the killer a bit confused, which is why I took that. And then as I've shown you before, use the bushes and that fence to take this window. So at this point I'm aware the killer will likely be bloodlust and I can't make it around again so I run to this pallet, which is why these pallets are critical. So if you're a survivor that, you know, relies on dead hard or, you know, just runs these pallets, runs these pallets and runs around, if you're not difficult to run around, you can see the killer. The point of these pallets is to break bloodlust, force the killer to break them and then you can get more distance. So if you're running the killer for, like, what, three gens by running around the safest pallets in the game, it doesn't make you go. Is probably putting your team at a massive detriment because they can't run. Up, they basically cannot run across the road now without getting hit. We spin around the house this way to pass the quick vault on the window up here. Our killer's getting a bit fast now, so it's time to uh, use power. Now, don't make the same mistake I did and realise there's a fence there. <laughs> Using our sprint burst, we have now rotated back to what I would call the new house of pain. We go upstairs just to maximise distance, and we know that while we're up here, we're not going to take the upstairs vault because the stagger duration is too long. Instead, We'll rotate downstairs and fast forward the window down there. Now you notice here immediately I can tell I'm not going to make it back around so now it's time. They'll be forced to break the wall because it's a generally safe pallet and we're going to now rotate to our safe pallet down here. This is chaining the buildings and using all your resources to your advantage, optimizing the usage of the breakable walls in the pallets. And back to the house of pain we go. With that wall broken, this is gently unsafe, however I get stuck on the uh, plant pots here and this chest is broken. 
So now all you see is just be messing around with this palette and see what I can do. So I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope this was uh, helpful in some way than you've had in field. Perhaps there'll be even better tips and all this when the uh, in future updates or whatever. But uh, I hope you enjoyed.